We thank God for this morning and we give God praise. We want to welcome our beloved brethren who have joined us divinely online as well. Let's put our hands together as we welcome them. You're all welcome. We are happy to have you. And this morning, once again, we'll be looking at our team for the month, Sweet Ending. We, our theme for the month is Sweet Ending. And our topic for today's message, and I want to say thank you, uh, for our Pastor, for the privilege to stand here before you, the opportunity to minister uh, this morning. Uh, I really, uh, really appreciate it in the name of Jesus. Our topic for this morning is the Lord has the final say. The Lord has the final say. If you really want to say amen to that, shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord has the final say. You see, as the year is coming to an end, as we enter this month of sweet ending, it's the Lord's say that matters. It is the Lord's say that is final in the name of Jesus. Our text will be taken from Psalms 33. I'm going to be reading from verses 8 and 9. Psalms 8, 33, 8 and 9. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of his name, of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and he stood fast in the name of Jesus. The Lord has spoken and he will stand fast in the name of Jesus. It is only the Lord that has the final say. I don't care what somebody has told you down the, throughout this year that you won't make it, you will not prosper, this will happen, oh, this sickness that you have is incurable. It is the Lord that has the final say. In the name of Jesus, the word of the Lord is what stands, even in every circumstance. The Lord has the final say. Why? Because the grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 40 verse 8. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. Matthew 24 35. For the word of the Lord is weak and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Of the joints and of the marrow. And the, the designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hebrews 4 verse 12. The word of God stands sure. I don't know what anyone may have been going through throughout the year. My message to you this morning, God's message to you this morning, is that the Lord has the final say. His word stands sure in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 46, verses 1 to 3, the Bible says, God is our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way, the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though the waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake, and they are surgeons. In Proverbs 18 verse 10, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Brethren, the righteous run into it and they are what? And they are saved. Isaiah 12 verse 2, surely God is my salvation. I will trust not, I will not be afraid. The Lord Jehovah is my strength. My song, he has become my salvation. Is he, has he become your salvation? Isaiah 41 verse 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you a right, righteous right hand. In the name of Jesus. It shall be a sweet ending for you. In the name of Jesus. This year will end sweet. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 26 verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed in thee. Because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. John 14 verse 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. Those are the words of God for you this end of the year. Because the Lord has the final say. Psalm 32 verse 7, you ask, you will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Exodus 33 verse 14, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, 
and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by neither shall that flame kindle upon thee. The word of God stands sure. The Lord has the final say. Philippians 4 verse 6, do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, the peace of God, like it's never going to change or work out right for you. And trust me, it could be very discouraging at such times. I've been there before. But it is not over until God says it's what? It's over. He has the final say. Last year, I had an incident that really, really troubled me for the first time in my business. I have a small uh, business. And um, I had a client who ordered some items uh, through me. And these items were really very expensive. And these items were withheld by the government. It really, really took sleep almost off my eyes. But the Lord himself showed up in the name of Jesus. Because after a period of time, when my clients were always getting worried and all that, I did not, I did not fret because I know God has the final say. No matter what the, the, the government and all the authorities wanted to check and, about that particular item, they released it at the end of the day and the, and the clients got their items. There are times that are troubling, situations that will almost take your sleep from you. That each incident really disturbed me because what was involved was over a quarter of a million. And I said, my Lord, what am I going to do? But the Lord showed up for me in the name of Jesus. The Lord is my light, Psalms 27, 1 to 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Thou... Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident in the name of Jesus. Will you be confident in the name of Jesus? Will you trust the Lord even in the midst of trouble? There may be a delay in an issue which you are believing God for, for a change. And it's looking like the change is not coming. It has become very discouraging and like there is no hope of change. Stand still and know that he is God in the name of Jesus. Even in delays, the Lord has the final say. In Romans 8, 28, remember he says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those that love God and those who are called according to his purpose. I have a sister friend. She been believing God for a life partner and it spanned for 59 years. 59 years, nobody talked to her. I mean, very nice sister, wonderful child of God, serving the Lord faithfully. In Nigeria then but you know what for her in the name of Jesus even at age 59 do you are you discouraged that this things that you're believing God for it's been delayed God will show up for you in the name of Jesus it got so well that a pastor here in the United States you know uh, got to know about her and today they are happily married and she has although she has no children of her own but the pastor was actually a widower and has boys, I mean hefty boys. Whenever I call her, I say, how about the boys? Living here in the United States. The Lord can never be late for you in the name of Jesus. Psalm 31 verse 15, my times are in your hands. The times are in the hands of the Lord. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Your time is in the hands of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. It is not in anybody's hands in the name of Jesus. The medical report may, look, may not look good. It may not look good. But that illness does not have the last word. God has the final say. Neither does the doctor who wrote the report. Both the report and the doctor, they are not the, the final say. The Lord has the final say. When I was a little bit younger, some years passed, I was taken to the hospital. I was having throat pains and all of all that. So they took me to the hospital and they diagnosed that it was tonsillitis. That was my first time of ever hearing that word. And that was the last that I heard it in the name of Jesus. My mother took me to the hospital. The doctors diagnosed if you check tonsillitis, it could just be simple medication, but in some cases it could end up in surgery. I was diagnosed for a surgery. So we went home. Then I was still a very young 
child of God. So I told my mother, look, I'm not going through this surgery. The Lord himself will heal me in the name of Jesus. So we went home and we started, I started praying because my mom had not even given her life to Christ then. When we went back again to the doctor, they said, who told you you have tonsillitis? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Till today, in the name of Jesus. The Lord will heal you in the name of Jesus. The Lord's report says, by his stripes you are healed. Isaiah 53 verse 5. Jeremiah 30 verse 17. For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You may have strong oppositions, both spiritual and physical, but your position do not have the final say. God being for you is more than the world being against you. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? None. Romans 8 verse 31. Luke 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. In the name of Jesus, you shall see a sweet ending this year. In the name of Jesus, the Lord has the final say. In the name of Jesus. You may ask me, Namdi, my manager does not like me. He said, I will never promote you under his watch. I say to you, he shall watch you and you will see you rise. In the name of Jesus. I don't care who the manager is. He does not have the final say. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 75 verse 5 to 7. Lift up your horn, O high. Speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west. Nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set up another. Lamentations 3 verse 35, 37. Who is there who speaks and when and, and it will come to pass unless the Lord has commanded it? Who is he that will speak against you if the Lord has not commanded it? I don't care who that manager is. The Lord will lift you up in the name of Jesus. This year shall end sweet for you in the name of Jesus. Your manager does not have the final say. The Lord does. The Lord does. Be your best at work. Be your best. Do your part. Let your talent shine. Then when it is time for you to be promoted, all the forces of darkness cannot hold you back. In the name of Jesus. Whether that manager likes you or not, God is behind the scene orchestrating things on your favor. In the name of Jesus. At the right time, God will either cause that person to who doesn't like you to be moved away. <laughs> Move out of the way. But they cannot stop your purpose. It's either they do the will of God concerning your life or they'll be moved out of the way. When you know that God has the final say, you don't live frustrated or worried. You stay in peace knowing that nothing can stop God's plan for your life. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the Bible says, For I know the thoughts <laughs> that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of what? Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you what? An expected end. In New King James Version, it says, To give you a future and a hope. You have a hope. You have a future. A bright one in the name of Jesus. When we came to this country initially, at some point, we needed to transfer our immigration status from where we were uh, to F1 and F2. My wife was then uh, in school, so as a dependent on her visa, uh, which was F1, we needed F2. So we went to the school and for it to be filed. Uh, they put in the application and the, uh, uh, <laughs> the student officer that was in charge of that application took my wife's application, took my daughter's application. I don't know what I have done to the devil, you know. <laughs> he looked at me and said, Mr. Sorry, your, your own visa may not go through. I said, what on earth? You will take my wife, you take my daughter, and then you will throw me out. I said, Madam, please, can you submit this application? Your own responsibility is to submit the application. Leave it to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord has the final say. In the name of Jesus. The application was put in. All came out approved in the name of Jesus. Jesus has the final say. Don't 
be afraid of what the experts will say or what they that in charge will say praise the lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion psalms 103 verses 2 and 4 it is the word of god that counts brethren it is the word of god that i will hold on to not unto any what any man will say in the name of jesus you may have been told that you will not amount to anything either by your teacher or your boss in the office or your colleagues you know what they don't have the final say about you you will overcome in the name of jesus you will become what god wants you to be in the name of jesus it is the lord that has the final say psalms 112 verse 7 he will not fear evil tidings his heart is steadfast trusting in the lord i will praise you for i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well psalms 139 verse 14 i am fearfully and wonderfully made it's not the the the, the boss that determines who i am no disrespect though but doctors the bankers the lawyers the experts the judges they may have strong reasons or facts for their position on your issue concerning you but they don't have the final say god has the final say in psalm 62 verse 11 the bible says god had spoken once twice have i heard this that power belong unto the unto god psalms 34 verse 17 and 18 the righteous cry and the lord hears him he delivers them from all their troubles the lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit are you crushed in spirit the lord has you he has you in the name of jesus god promised abraham and sarah that they were going to have a baby but they were both way too old abraham was in his 80s sarah had gone through the change of life and there was no way in the natural for them to have a child sometimes god will put things in your heart that may seem not impossible it is easy to get to dismiss it and think that well it's not going to happen but the scripture says abraham in romans chapter 4 verses 18 to 20 abraham who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body nor now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb he staggered not hey at the promise of god through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to god in the name of jesus he didn't deny that sarah's womb was dead he didn't ignore the facts he just chose not to dwell on them don't dwell on things that does not matter in the name of jesus because god has the final say it may look clean the things that you're going through may look difficult but god has the final say he chose to believe god abraham chose to believe god will you choose to believe god this morning in the name of jesus if you're going to stay in faith you have to act like abraham and not consider what looks dead don't dwell in what seems impossible but believe that if the lord said it he will do it in the name of jesus are you spending more time thinking about the problem or the promises of god are you talking more about how big the challenge is or about how big your god is fear not for i am with you isaiah 41 verse 10 fear not for i am with you be not dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you yes i will help you i will uphold you and with my righteous right hand isaiah 41 verse 10 when we were to get to this land there's a portion of uh, the story about this that at times pastor it's we've lost it in, in the event you remember dollar general pastor when we were to rent we wanted to we, we when we did not get uh, uh, law catherine and we were told that we could not buy that property over there we actually wanted to rent a shopping mall store just down the road over here the dollar general a dollar general company came in and said that they wanted to rent that same hall so the landlord you know considering that this uh, <laughs> this church that doesn't have anything or they felt we didn't we didn't have much they gave the uh, consent to dollar general up to today dollar general never rented that place 
you know what God was about doing? He didn't want us to go renting a place where he was not taking us because he had the final say concerning this place. He was bringing us here. He, he blocked the chances there through Dollar General. Dollar General never booked that, rented, he never rented that place. Here we are today. We came to a 6.2 acre of land, but now it's, it's almost 9 point something acres, Pastor. The Lord has the final say in the name of Jesus. When you have God on your side, he will make seemingly impossible come true for you. If Sarah and Abraham would have gone for a checkup, no doctor would have ever given them a chance, medically speaking. It was impossible, but don't let people talk you out of what God has put in your heart. Don't let the experts convince you that it is not going to happen. Remember, experts built the Titanic and it sank. And amateurs, they built the ark and it floated. Because the Lord had the final say. In the name of Jesus. I don't care who the expert is. No disrespect. No disrespect. No disrespect. But sometimes the experts, they can get it wrong. They don't have the final say. God does. In the name of Jesus. I must be rounding up. <laughs> because of our time. I must be rounding up right now. As I close, as I close, three things that you must hold strongly. I'll quickly rush through that and we'll be ready to pray this morning. Three things that you must hold strongly if the word of the Lord must remain final in every of your situation. Number one, know what God says. If you do not know what God says, how can you stand on it and say it is the final say? You need to know what God has said in the first instance. What has God said about you? Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Had he said it, shall he not do it? Or had he spoken and he shall not make it good? In 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. But rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to know the word of truth. You need to know. Number two, believe it. Believe the word of the Lord. You need to believe it. You see, it is not just the word that you know, but the word that you believe that takes you there. Isaiah 43 verse 10, You are my witness, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me, and understand that I am. He, before me, there is no other God formed, neither shall there be after me. Mark 9:23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible, even unto them that believe. Oh, I, I don't know if I have time for this. In 1996, we played the Olympics. Nigeria played the Olympics uh, in soccer. It was a very, very <laughs> interesting period. They competed against the top uh, countries across the world. You know, uh, Nigeria competed against Mexico, they competed against uh, uh, Brazil and, uh, and uh, Argentina. In fact, they played semi-finals with Brazil and played finals with uh, Argentina. In the semi-final match of Brazil, Nigeria was 3-1 uh, three three down in the first half. Second half, they played up to the 74th minute. 74th minute, they were still 3-1. They were still down by two goals. In the 74th minute, they scored and, and put back one of the goals. In the 90th minute, they scored the last goal. It is not yet over until it is over in the name of Jesus. But sometimes we behave like people who walked out of that match. Some people left, started leaving. They, they gave up on Nigeria. But Nigeria came back and they won the match in the name of Jesus. I must, stop, I must, <laughs> I must wrap up this morning. My time is up on it. Take a step of faith. John 4 verse 50. That's number 3. After you have known the word of God. After you have believed it. Act on it. John 4 verse 50. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he did what? He went his way. Believing God. He did. He acted on it. Very, verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. Let us rise as we pray this morning. I want you to call upon the Lord. 
I want you to speak to the Lord. The Lord has the final say. It is only the Lord's word that will stand. It doesn't matter what your teacher has said. It doesn't matter what your boss has said in the office or what that manager thinks about you. Even if they think you will not amount to anything. Ah, this, the word of the Lord will supersede that in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray this morning. I want you to call upon the name of the Lord. I want you to speak to the Lord this morning and ask that the Lord himself will put you on top because he has the final say. Speak to him this morning. Worship the King of Kings. Ask him to make a change in your situation. And this year will be a sweet ending for you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.